Hi, I'm Chris, and today we're going to look at how to scribe a skirting board. Now, if you ever heard the expression, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, you would know that that really does apply to woodworking. And what I mean by that is uh, there's so many different ways that you can get the same result. Some are quicker and some are more accurate. But what we're going to look at is changing the technique to make it even faster, but still getting that accuracy. So let's take a look at the way that I cope or scribe, depending where you're from, on a skirting board. So for this, we're going to use the mitre saw, we're going to use a jigsaw, and we're going to use a half rounded file. So if you come along, what we're going to do, I'm going to walk through it, talk through it with you, and then at the end, I'm going to just do it at normal pace, because you, you don't ever rush with woodworking machines. So I'm going to do it at normal pace, and then we're going to time it, and we're going to see how long it takes. Now, maybe you know a faster way. Maybe you know a more accurate way, whereas this is pretty accurate. I mean, with scribing a skirting, there isn't really a huge amount to it. Um, but anyway, let's go and have a look, and I'll show you what I do. Right, so we've got the two pieces here. And what we want to do is create a scribe on that piece so it slots into there. And what that means is that it doesn't matter what degree the wall is at, you can push it in at different angles. And you'll see what I mean when I do it. So first of all, I'll put the safety glasses on, is I want to create a 45 degree mitre down there the wrong way. And if I bring this camera down, damage but there we go so we've got the mitre there and it, it's running the wrong way but obviously we want, we want to back cut it but the reason why I've done that because now it creates a line of the white primer and the bare MDF so we can see clearly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and what I want to do is cut right on that line there just down to here back cutting it so we keep the saw set up the same way we line that up right to the line. And then we cut down to there. So you see it's just, just along that line. And then we're going to go over to the jigsaw. Right, so we've got our piece here. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the jigsaw, but not like some people have got a coping sled that fits on the bottom of the jigsaw. Now we don't have that, so we're going to cut it from the top. Right, so I'm going to back cut it as I cut. You'll have to see what I mean as I do it. So there's one piece. So as you see there, you can still see some of that bare MDF there, but I, we don't want to actually touch the line here because we can't be that accurate with the jigsaw. So we're going to file that off after and get it nice and smooth. There we go, we're getting a, a bit nearer. And at the top, it will create like a little flappy bit which will snap off just up here because obviously if we're trying to keep all the white paint on there. So we want to try and cut that straight. But first of all, I'm going to back cut that angle there. that hopefully you can see on the camera. 
So, half rounded file. Get the rounded end. Just have a bit of camera there. Grab my other piece. It's not bad. Could do with a little bit more sanding. So there we are. So we want to push it in like so. So there's a, a slight gap at the top. So it just means I've got to file off a little bit more to get it in there. Right. Glasses on. We're going to start the timer and see how long it takes. And stop. There you have it. So obviously, it's at around 45 degrees there. It's quite a tight fit. So was that faster than what you thought? Or faster than the way that you usually do it? Who knows, but I can assure you it's a lot quicker than using a coping saw. It's whether you feel comfortable with the jigsaw and using it at that angle.